Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Mel Sol Golf School. I am Mel Sol, Director of Instruction and Master Professional at Paulie's Plantation Golf and Country Club. And today's golf tip is about finding your power source. And each person is slightly different. So I'm going to give you various scenarios that would help your power source. One of those scenarios is going to fit you. You have to go on the range and try them and see which one gives you the most. So one of the things I've spoken about many times is hip speed. Two months ago when I was talking about practicing, I said, don't be afraid to exaggerate. So if you're working on hip speed, do your practice swing first and see how when I got up here, I made a big move there and then a big move that way. So it's a big slide like that. So when I hit the ball, I'm going to exaggerate that hip. And there was plenty of oomph into that shot. There's also core strength. Those of you that are weak in your core, you cannot hold your coil going back. Your knee is going to buckle, your body's going to move over. So if you feel when you go back, you can't keep this position and, and the core is st not strong, then you have to go either to a gym or at home and work on sit-ups and, and crunches and that type of thing and get some core strength so that when you go back you can hold that coil so that when you uncoil you can create speed. For those of you like me that are a little older and I've started doing this recently in my own swing. For years I've kept my back foot at 90 degrees and got that coil. I'm not as flexible as I used to be so what I do now is I flare that back toe out a little bit. So both toes are flared out. My friend and mentor Phil Ritson, he used to call this the Daffy Duck stance. Got both toes flared out. What that allows is on the backswing, it allows my hip to rotate a little bit more. So when I come through, I can create some speed because if I can rotate the hip, obviously I can rotate the shoulders too. So normally I'd get to there, so by allowing the hip to rotate, I get a better shoulder turn. So, going back, more power there. And finally, another area that will really help you square the club face. Obviously, if you're hitting the ball in the middle of the club face and the club face is square at impact, you're going to get a much more powerful shot than if the club face is slightly open, which is a high percentage of the golfers that I teach at impact the club face is open and you get this kind of glancing blow and you lose you don't realize how much power you lose but you lose a whole lot of power when your club face is not square so when you swing a golf club and I'll do it from this angle so you can see as you go back the club face rotates when you come down from here the club face has to start rotating around until it gets to squared impact and the continuation is you can see the toe turning as I'm going through over there. That is what we call the release and the release is when I square the club face but continue so that I'm allowing the toe of the club to pass the heel of the club. I can do that by taking my lead arm and rotating it like that anything that will help me square the club face. So if I rotate the club, for me personally that makes me hook the ball and if I wanted to hit an intentional draw I would do that. I don't do that in my full swing. So each one of these power sources is going to be different. So go to the practice tee Try these out, find out which is your power source. The only one that you're going to have to do some real work is the, is the core strength. But trust me, it's really worth it when you start hitting the ball 20 or even 30 yards further. Thanks for watching.